Hey YouTube, I thought I'd do a 2.5 update on these all pro cylinder heads. Um, <clears throat> one thing I wanted to point out was that the, I did a little bit of measuring and I was looking at the bowls and basically what I believe happened was that the heads were cut to receive the actual valve seats but that absolutely no work was done below where they machined it to drive in or press in the seats basically what was left was I've removed most of it on these heads um, it was about a 65 thousandths ridge that was left below the intake seat. Grab this little pointer here. You can see a little bit, a little bit of it left right here in this port. I haven't worked this side of the intake port yet, but it literally they had left a sixty-five thousandths wide ridge just below the intake seats on these cylinder heads um, I had some racer friends of mine come by and uh, were dropping off uh, turbo 400 for me and a set of uh, factory LS1 241 cylinder heads that I acquired for a for my own personal project I'll have to cover that in a separate video so I don't get sidetracked uh, but I had them take a look at these cylinder heads and the first thing that they brought up was that they had never seen an all pro cylinder head where they just, you know, rudimentar, just rudimentarily, I can't even say it today, I apologize. They did a crappy job of just stamping all pro on the end of this. Every all pro cylinder head they had ever seen had all pro heavily casted into the end of it uh, the valve cover rails look different they're wanting to know if these could be they did not think they looked as crappy workmanship as like a pro comp or something like that but they were wanting to know if maybe these could be some of those new first casting or, or like raw castings of maybe the Pro Max cylinder heads or something along that line. You know, I'm not claiming that these are not what they're marked. I just had some questions from some friends of mine that were here today checking them out. And I told them I didn't know. I said that, you know, I'm operating on the assumption that they are the brand that the customer bought. And then I'm going to do my work to them and make sure that they flow good. So um, if any of you guys have seen maybe some of the first run all pro heads for the LS or, you know, if, if you have any information, it would be really nice to have it to pass on to the customer, you know, just so they'll have that information for their own benefit as well. But um, I wanted to show you guys or tell you rather that there was a 65 thousandths ridge left pretty much almost all the way around the intake seat to the bowl no cut no transition the exhaust I don't know what those people were thinking and again well here's one that I haven't finished cutting out I cut out the short side but not the back side of it Look at how thick that ridge is below the valve seat. You know what I mean? That little uh, peak, that's thicker than what I measured. Because I think I measured them out at 135 thousandths ridge all the way around. And that little peak's way more than 135 thousandths, but I didn't use it as my example. But, I mean, you can see... 
that's that's solid aluminum that sticks out below the seat. Now keep in mind, I've already done the other half of this bowl. I'm just working my way around it because um, this back side requires a lot of uh, material removal and blending without excessive digging. Because I think I've mentioned in, in videos before that, let me get my little pointer here. When you're porting your heads, you don't want to dig back that way. You don't want to go way back that way. Because remember what we talked about? Line of sight. Air wants to come out of that port with the least amount of hassle as it can. So when it comes up this port, you want it to be able to climb out of this back wall as quickly as possible. Now, I mean, there are cylinder heads that there's a lot of room, like on the intake side. You know what I mean? When you look, sorry about that, got sidetracked. There's a lot of room between the center line of your valve guide and the back wall opposite your short turn. And people think, oh, I can, wow, look at, you know, the, in their mind they think, Oh, I can, there's a lot of digging back here. But if you actually look at the profile of that back wall, they're maintaining an angle so that that air can come up this port, hit that wall, and get, and get into the cylinder. You know what I'm saying? You don't want that 90 degree turn back there. Number one, you'll run into water because there's water behind the guide and almost every head. But you have to maintain the least amount of angle as, you know, if you could keep it at a 45 degree angle, that would be great. But that's not going to be possible on every cylinder head. But even on these exhaust ports, I'm going to cut this out. What I do is I take a, a pretty heavy cutting tool, single cut burr, and I will cut that down. Now these heads give you a lot of extra challenges because the seats and the valve jobs are already done on them. So I have to come in here, remove that 135 thousandths plus, and then blend it seamlessly down all the way to the guide and then blend it in the side. Um, let's see if I think I've got this one done. I can't remember if I worked this one or not. This other head, oh, this one was my example where I was going to try to show you where I just spent about 10, five minutes or something before we went to dinner where I'm starting here and working this way just to show you how I slowly whittle that metal out. See right here, you can see where I've cut down this far and then here's the full 135 thousandths I haven't really touched yet. I just wanted to show you, sorry about all the shaking, the representation of coming in slowly, 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 while maintaining a visual where your cutter's cutting, staying away from your seat, and then not digging too deep down here that you mess up your angle. Remember we talked about having our angle so the air can get out without a lot of restriction so you want this to be to the bottom of the seat, but still angled properly to that wall. So that's what I've been working on. And I just wanted everybody to see the amount of material that's actually being removed. Uh, the exhaust, the bowl cut right below the seat on the exhaust side was horrible. Um, for having a 1.57 valve, it had a really small neck down opening in that aluminum below the seat, but that all will be fixed and fully blended into the port. Um, this head over here, I don't know if you can, might be too dark, but look at the difference. Look at the difference. If you can see up in there, I apologize, I would have had a, flashlight available if I'd have been smart but that exhaust bowl cut 
It's completely done on those. The intake sides are not done yet, but the exhaust port bowl is completely to cut on this head and it literally blends seamlessly into that wall and then goes down past the valve guide. So this head will be not too far behind it because the uh, short side has already been cut down, you know, took the big stuff out. Then I'll work my way across tomorrow when the kids aren't asleep and get those knocked out. Then I'll finish uh, both sides of that. I think I've done both sides actually. Yeah, I've cut down both sides of the intakes on uh, this head. I say intakes, but the bowl cut on the intakes on this and head are done. The exhaust sides are half done. And then I've got, I don't know why I did it like that, but I've got the exhaust bowl cut completely done on that head and half of it done on the intakes. So I don't usually do my stuff like that, but apparently I was in the mood to do something weird. But regardless, I will have all the bowl cuts and blends done shortly. And I will go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and run my probably my I'm gonna probably use my double cut burr to run through the ports. Make sure everything is uh, kosher as far as getting the casting lines out of it and making a, what would you call it, just a uniform texture down through the ports and keep everything a similar, similar texture so it just looks more optically appealing because uh, it won't really change the flow, but it'll just look a lot better. And won't show like, oh, okay, we worked this part of the port, but we left this as cast, you know, stuff like that. Because I like to at least make everything look better so that the work I do blends in and uh, looks like hopefully the head came that way. Because when I get done with it, that's the way the heads I think should have been sent out of the factory with. But anyway, at, starting out at 217.5 cc. Uh, these things, I wouldn't be surprised if they were 219 to 220. I'd say probably 219 to 220 cc when I get done. And these things will definitely, from what I've measured and what I know from, you know, porting these cylinder heads in the past, uh, these things will easily flow 285 or, or more. They could very well be pushing up close to 300 CFM. I mean, I, I would say 290 plus. That would be a really safe estimate on these cylinder heads, you know. Because I think I've mentioned before, once you get up close to 219 cc on your intake runner with a decent profile, then that puts you really close to 285. Thanks for watching.